Greetings fellow humans, Suburban Herb here and I am sincerely ecstatic to say welcome back. Today we'll visit my last grow of Girl Scout cookies and Black Domina just a little bit to reminisce but more importantly to guess the yield. But then I'll go through all my pre-grow preparations and considerations in this brand new environment for my next grow which will be starting within hours. So let's talk about choosing my growing medium fine-tuning my new environment for temperature and humidity, and my recent water quality concerns. But before we start, I need to thank some real heroes without whose help I wouldn't be here. Jeff and Jenny, Ryan and Kim, Kevin, Wanda, and all of Team Good Riddance, thank you. It's great to be back, mother lovers. Let's do this. Okay, my friends, here we are. And this is it, believe it or not. Here's where my grow room is going. Looks perfect, right? Looks perfect. GoPro, stop recording. And here we are, folks. Five days later, from the exact same spot. It is with the wood stove sat. We've now put in an electric heater, put some laminate flooring down, some insulated foam on the walls, made it airtight with some foil tape, and otherwise uh, I have uh, exhaust out the top here through an old stove pipe. And here's the room we're gonna work with. It's 16 by 10. And Blitz loves it. And it's gonna be a beautiful uh, little spot for our plants and us to hang out in. Couldn't be happier. It's gonna work perfectly. Great little spot on the new property. What do you think, Blitz? You like it? He does, he's a big fan. GoPro, stop recording. So one of the things that I have to prepare, one of the decisions that I have to make is what medium I'm going to use. And it's kind of interesting at this point because basically I have two ones that I've effectively never used before. One, a sort of living soil that I would make out of these such ingredients. I bought them uh, at the beginning of this season, assuming I was going to be growing where I lived, but uh, that plan all changed and now we're here. So I have all the ingredients for a nice living soil, which is worm castings. I got Fox Farm uh, Ocean Forest, some Promix HP and some Gaia Green all purpose. And then we throw in there uh, a pile of perlite. Boom, living soil-ish. Something we could start with, it would be my first attempt. So uh, I could try that. I'm excited about trying that. And then also my old standby that I've used since I've started growing, and that is good old cocoa. So a soilless medium, but the change here is that I have gone ahead and acquired Jack's nutrient uh, system, Hydro 123, which I'm also really excited about trying. So it's a little bit different in that um, I believe it gives you a little bit more control in what you're feeding your plants as opposed to um, mixtures out of a bottle. Ish. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to trying that as well. And I haven't yet decided what I'm going to be starting with. I know I'll be using both soon but I've yet to decide what I'll be starting with or what I'm starting for that matter. But uh, these are my options and I'm looking forward to it. GoPro, stop recording. So it's been decided thanks to Scotty, AKA the Dude Grows, his most recent interview on Garden Talk with Mr. Grow It. I've decided to go hybrid. He discusses the benefit of adding worm castings to cocoa choir to create an environment for microbes and beneficial bacteria to hang out and prosper. This makes good sense to me, so I'm gonna try his recipe of 60% cocoa, 20% worm castings, and 20% perlite. Thanks, Scotty. On to the next challenge. Okay, since I am about to drop my seeds for a little soaking before germination, I thought it would be very interesting to check out the quality and quantity of my water. Um, I'm coming from suburbia where uh, I was coming off city water and I actually had really good city water um, where I was. So uh, that worked out well. 
um, where I was, I had, the water had about a PPM range in between 70 and say 120, and the pH was around nine, I believe. So this will be interesting, because I'm quite curious what this well water is gonna look like. Here we go, let's take a look. No idea. Oh my God. Hoo-wee. Well, ain't that something. So if you can see that, we're up over 500 in uh, parts per million, which means this water has a lot of somethings in it, which means I may have to treat this water. Maybe. I'll have to look into it. That could be a thing. Okay, it's two days later, and I had to confirm my uh, findings because I've never been able to calibrate that particular TDS slash uh, pH meter that I was using. I ordered one off Amazon just to be sure, uh, just to check, and here we go. Let's see, yeah, some t it was somewhere between four and 500. So that's slightly less, and we're getting closer to the realm of reasonable at 320. So I'm not exactly sure what to do. Thanks to the gentleman at Cannabis Lifestyle TV, I now have an idea what to do. They explain how higher PPM in tap water is often caused by excess chlorine or chloramine making it problematic whereas higher PPM in well water is more often other minerals and less troublesome. At a parts per million of just over 300 with well water, I'm going to assume it's fine for now. So I think we're gonna go for it. So uh, I have, I'm gonna start with three strains here, cultivars, I guess is what we're calling them now. Uh, this is uh, Grill Glue number four from Dr. Green Thumb Seeds. He recommends not soaking. So I'm gonna pay him the respect and not soak his seeds even though uh, most people for the most part recommend it or at least don't identify it as a problem. Um, Dr. Green Thumb does believe it can be a problem where you um, can ruin your seeds, kind of waterlog them. Um, so I won't do that to his seeds and uh, be an interesting little test, but uh, the seeds that I have here from the bseeds.com, I will. We are going to soak them for 12 to 24 hours before we germinate them. These are orange sherbet auto flowers from the bcs.com. In they go. Um, and I'm only gonna do two of those, just for fun, just as a little experiment. And then I'm going to do four Bruce Banner feminized, also from the bcs.com. In you go. There we are. Bruce Banner, orange sherbet autos, and Gorilla Glue number fours, which I am not soaking. So these I'm going to put in a dark place, such as, say, right here in the glass cabinet. In you go. We'll see you in 12 to 24. GoPro, stop recording. So another thing that I have been going through as far as preparation is, I'm in a brand new place, brand new room, brand new uh, geographic location for that matter. Um, so different uh, ambient outside weather patterns, whatnot. Um, it is a completely different place. So first of all, or one of the things I will do to prepare a bit as much as I can is see what sort of ambient uh, environment we're dealing with. So what I've done is I set up a tent uh, and uh, I've set up a couple different sensors. I've got my sensor here that uh, goes with my Myers Hydro four inch uh, exhaust fan and filter. And she's telling me we're at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 78% relative humidity. High humidity. I may not be using that humidifier, but uh, uh, I believe it will be more humid. Humidity might be an issue for me uh, in this new environment. So that's something I'll be keeping my eye on. I also have my Inkbird controller uh, hooked up because once I get my seedlings in here, I most definitely will be having to use uh, uh, some heating assistance. I've heat in the room, but I'll also, in this case with my seedlings, I'll be starting off with some heat in the tent. So uh, this is all just to get a grasp on the, just the ambient environment. 
Um, at some point, I may be coming out of the tent and then just be using the room and using the ambient. Uh, so the ambient temperature in the room will be completely relevant. But uh, that's another step that we're preparing for this grow that we're starting very soon, 24 hours. That's it for now. GoPro, stop recording. Okay, I realized that I couldn't have a harvest and not weigh something. So here's what we're gonna do. I have this bucket here, which has most of the harvest, a good percentage. What percentage? I have no idea. That's what we're going to guess right here and right now. So, guess the yield. And that said, I'm gonna find out the yield right now. How's that sound, Blitz? Sis? All right, let's do it. Hopefully this will work. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay. We are in pounds and ounces, so let's zero that. Okay, <laughs> hopefully that'll balance. So it did get to zero. Now, let's see if we can transport this reasonably well. Another big boy. So, so look at that. This, this uh, was zip or uh, vacuum sealed. So it's probably a lot denser than it looks. Before it went into this one bucket, it I had it curing in three buckets. So it uh, it occupied about you know 60% or 65% of three buckets. If that's any help at all guessing. But um, it, it's probably a little denser, a little squeezier than it would normally be or would have been. Okay, okay, we're getting full here. Hopefully the scale. I believe it was two pounds and zero four point zero four ounces. I'll confirm afterwards, but I believe that's what it was. Two pounds point zero four ounces. So here we go. Try that again on. And I don't have to zero it because I know what it weighed. Here we go. Hopefully, I can balance it. Here. Okay, so the bucket and the bowl weighed. Two pounds, a little over two pounds, 2.04. So leave a comment below this video with your guess in pounds, ounces, and or grams to win a prize pack from the bcs.com. And we'll announce the yield in approximately two weeks in the first video after the contest close of August 23rd, 2021. So that's it for this video. Come back soon for the next update of my new grow of Bruce Banner. Gorilla Glue number four, and Orange Sherbet Autos, which is underway. I'll see you next time.